Hey guys, before we go to the rat tail hinges, I wanted to touch base very quickly on a couple of in issues here. We've got our doors hung, everything's lining up nice. But we talked about early on a little bit about doors, how they can bind or pinch. You want your door open and closing very nice. When you make a door like this, that the thickness here and the thickness in here is the same. Or if you have closure strips, there's something you have to be aware of. And that's the rotation point right here. When this door goes in, this corner right here is going to try to engage this. And it can cause you a pinch. Every time I do one, I take a crank neck chisel or plane and I simply clean this corner back so that when I shut this door and I look down it I don't have any pinch or bind. That's important. And so if you're having to buy a pinch where you're shutting this door and it's wanting to bounce back on you, that's the first place to look or one of them. Second place to look is to make sure your screws are countersunk all the way down. Remember we looked at that hinge and it's on a wedge. But if you're still having an issue to come in here and again with the angle going toward the back of the drawer, you don't want to check the door, you don't want to change your face to put a one to two degree back angle on it this way. What that does when that door is shut it allows more space between the leaves of the hinge. Gives plenty of clearance, makes sure everything shuts and closes nicely. Now these are done for the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put some pieces on it, put a stick and some clamps just to keep everything nice and shut so nothing warps or anything. Although I don't think we're going to have that because of the way we did them. But just to make sure we'll clamp them shut top and bottom until we get back to them. And as you can well see, those are our lines. And if we can swing over here to this one, you'll see we're pretty much the same. That sneak up on it thing is extremely important. Taking your time, fitting your doors. So that's the way we do it. Okay, we're gonna get this down get a bird's eye view and we're going to put some rat tail okay. hinges. Okay, rat tails. Let's take a look and see what they consist of. A rat tail consists of you have the leaf, the tail, and you have or the post and the support. That's all surface mount. Now one of the other things with them, they're always, you got to get your left and right. And in the case again of the pie safe where I'm using three hinges, I got, uh, in this case I got a pair and a half of lefts, a pair and a half of rights. That gives me the three hinges. Now the way I lay these out, and again this is just my personal preference, as I go to the top rail and I find the center. I do essentially the exact same thing on the bottom rail. Now the first thing I want you to notice is the shims. Just as we've done on everything else, we have it shimmed in place exactly how we want it to go. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to lay out, I want to put the leaf on the tail and I want to lay it up here. I'm going to center the center hole on the leaf to my line. And if you look over here very carefully, you're going to notice that as you come down the post that it will start to taper down here. 
We don't want that. We want to stay on the square, on the round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this where I'm about a quarter of an inch above the actual leaf. And I'm going to get everything looking just as good as I can get it looking. Now be very careful in something like if you get too far back, then you could stand a chance of splitting your door. So I kind of, you know, divide the difference up. Then at this point, I'm going to mark the bottom of this leaf. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom. So this is pretty much eye, you know, just getting it by eye. Now my post, when I look at the post, post is, I mean, the post is about a quarter, or the post supports about a quarter of an inch that wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw me in exactly where the bottom of my leaf is going to be. Then I'm going to take, and they're pretty close to center. I just want to, I'm, going to just, I'm just going to look at what the center of this would be, and I'm going to mark it. Again, just all by eye. Okay. Going to mark that. Now, I'm going to come back to the leaf with the post and I'm going to draw where I need the post to center. Then I'm going to get the center of that. Now one of the things with a rat tail is close counts. Meaning, each one of these is hand forged. So every one is going to be slightly different. But they're usually close enough that we can make up what we want. We can stay symmetrical in our drilling. Now, in this big pie safe, we have an issue. And I've ran into it several times. We have a machine bolt. That's designed to go through and have a nut on the back of it. However, I'm going to tell you something. I've done this numerous times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill it, and I'm simply going to screw it in, even though it's a machine screw. When I do the final assembly on the, on the safe, I'm going to put a few drops of either a CA glue or some epoxy in, in there and screw this thing in. You know, you're going in, what is that, inch or better? <clears throat> and we're drilling into solid oak. I don't think we're going to have an issue. But the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure I drill it just as straight as I can. A little jig to help me do that. All right. Now I'm not sure exactly what this the size of that drill is. You're just going to have to experiment a little bit.
Now, when you take this down, what you want to do is be careful <coughs> and make sure you're coming in where you want and that this is twisted so that it's setting flush right here. In other words, it's flush. Now, the other thing you're going to notice on this, I need to go down just a little further. So what I usually do is I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to countersink just a little bit underneath that. And I'll show you that. And I'm going to show you why. I wish you could feel this going in. It's tight. I don't know that you need any glue, but I'll leave that to your discretion, but they hold fine. You know, if I was doing a pine or something, I'd have a little bit more concern. Let me grab a countersink. Now, just about like you would a screw. You don't want a big one in here because you don't want to be able to, you want all that to be pretty much hidden. What I'm looking at here when I put this on is I'm looking to make sure that this is laying. See, I want to get this down flat. There we go. That's good right there. That's it on that one. See what we have? Now I'm going to go down here and do my other one. Whoop, whoop, get started straight here, don't do that. All right, we're laying flat. My space to my edge is pretty close to the same. Now, if you have any issues with any of this, you can simply take a couple of hammers and you can hammer it right to where you want. That's the way it was made. All right, we're set there, here. Now, once that goes down, that's kicking up a little bit. Usually the screw will pull it. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and take another half a turn on it. All right, 
see how this one is. Maybe the same. Yep, one more half turn. All right, I'm gonna get a self-centered bit and we're gonna put some screws in. Okay, with everything pretty much positioned like I want, I'm gonna start by screwing in the post. Now, I think this is a 764, so I'm not really sure. But again, it's one of them self-centering bits. Now, and again, I have a steel screw. Phillips head steel, because we're gonna be replacing these when, they're com when it's complete with a black iron um, slotted screw. You wouldn't have had a Phillips and a rat tail. And you certainly wouldn't have had a square drive. What I'm looking at now is my spacing top and bottom. I want that pretty even. Try to slip a little bit. That's that oak. That's that hard grain and soft grain in that rifts on oak. <laughs> that drill bit's trying to go to the area of least resistance. The softer grain in there. Now, here's the key. See this? If you don't make sure when you screw this in that this, this, you need to make sure this leaf is all the way down and all the way out, or your door's gonna drop. Here's another trick, don't do but one hole. Okay, I'm setting up here a little bit. I'm now adjusted. All right. Again, pushing in good and hard and down. Now, a word to the wise. When I told you don't put but one hole, oftentimes, actually what I will do is I will simply drill this hole and this one for the tail, and I don't drill the others until after the piece, until, I, until it's finished and I'm ready to assemble. Because sometimes getting these right back in the exact same perfect position is a little tricky. And that's the reason for drill one hole. That way if you have an issue you have the other two open to be able to do whatever. Okay, these are on.
Now, if you have any unevenness, again, little adjustment. And she'll lay down. Now, for the center one, what I want to do is I want to center the leaves. Leaves. So let me grab a tape. Camille. What I'm doing is I'm just measuring from the center of the screw to the center of the screw. I'm 17 and three, I mean 34 and three quarters, so that's 17 and three eighths to the center. I'm gonna go ahead, since I'm set up, and draw my, for my post. And just so you know, you see this is RTL? You gotta be careful because you're gonna think that means right, this means rat tail left. I'm gonna tell you how I know that. That's the identification markings. All right. That's where I wanna be. This is where my post has to be. Half of that. Right there. See, they're not all that difficult. And if you use, you know, you could, that there's eight hinges, hand forged eight hinges, and all this pretty nice. And again, it's just one of those things that gives it that kind of a neat look. Customers love them. Customers just absolutely love these things. Now, you know what? I'm sitting here talking. I forgot to countersink that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Brain did today, guys. Forgot where it was at. Now, one of the things, everything we've done on the doors to this point still stands. You know, getting a little bind or pinch in that corner. You know, you want to watch that. Now, if you get a pair of these and it's really loose in here, 
This one isn't too bad, but I'm going to show you what to do. All right, if that's a little loose, just like a blacksmith, two hammers. Tighten her up. You can see right here, these are the screws that will actually be going in it. If you happen to mess up the finish on your screws, try a little black magic marker, but I hope you don't. So you can always take a hammer and adjust a little bit. And I would hope by doing this you understand. Somebody out there is going to scream, well they should make them more precise. Guys, they're made by like a blacksmith. I mean, they, they make them extremely nice. But again, they're hand forged. So sometimes a little tap or whatever becomes necessary. Not a big deal. All right. Make sure I got everything just like I want. I do. This one's up just a little bit. Might have twisted it when I put that screw in. Make sure these stay down. What you now have is you now have a set of rat tail hinges installed. There you go. Now the other thing with the rat tails, like there's others, you can slide them off, slide them on. But again, don't put that other screw in there, the rest of those screws in until you get set. And the other thing to be aware of is that moving that leaf just the least little bit can create, you know, can change your whole, you know, your, your gaps top and bottom. Again, save the final until you've got your finishing done. Okay, that's rat tails. I guess it's time now to go look at making some uh, shelf supports. All right, the rat tails. Just want to show them to you before we go to doing our um, shelf supports. Like I said, it's one of my favorite hinges. It just I love it on a power safe. And uh, anything primitive sort of give a country look, I like rat tails. Okay, it's time for us to go look at them shelf supports. All right, the shelf supports. Now let me show you what I've done. I simply took 
our the wood that we laminated up and as you can well see I've got a vertical grain and a cross grain again shop made plywood quarter inch each layer so we're three quarters of an inch thick now I think early on I'd mentioned to you that I was going to make these inch and a quarter and I got to looking and saying yeah I don't need all that so I'm going to I made these inch and an eighth and I'm going to notch them five eighths but let me before we get there let me show you what we're going to do got to make the jig here's going to be my jig now I stapled it and the reason I did that I've got a double layer here if you got a piece of eight quarter scrap or something work fine because I got to make a guide and all I'm going to do is attach it to my uh, to my miter gauge to set square to the saw. Let me get a shorter screw here, guys. Too long. Right back. Okay, what I've got is I've got a three quarter inch dado. And this is a piece of material that's three quarters of an inch wide, five eighths of an inch thick. And I'm just using it as a gauge for the height on the dado blade. I'm gonna make an initial cut. Now, what we're gonna do, now, in case any of you guys have never heard of a stuff called dental molding, I think it's D-E-N-T-I-L, You can use the exact same setup for making it. Now the reason we want the double material here is this is going to fit in there. And we want it to fit snug. But let me cut it off a little bit. Now we want it to fit snug in here and the reason we, we want the dual piece here is so that when we screw this in, or staple it, whatever we want to do, the double thickness is going to keep it from being able to move side to side. But also, because this is so tight, it's, we're going to use this as an index point to make the um, guides. I, I need to loosen this edge up a little bit, so all I'm going to do is sand it just a little very quickly just to make sure that I want the back end fitting in tight but I want the front end to fit in without any effort okay be right back okay when I say loosely this is what I'm talking about I want I don't want any obstruction and this is going to go on just like this so I want to make sure I place this correctly there we go All right, now I'm gonna want a three quarter inch spacing between each. That's a little much. That's gonna give a lot of different support, a lot of adjustment. But that just happens to be what I like. So I'm gonna take my exact same three quarter of an inch strip I had, set it against the blade. I'm gonna clamp this and then screw it in place. Now I feel sure you guys have already got the gist of what we're going to be doing here. All right. Got a little blow through there. The screw's a little bit long. Let me get a rasp and knock that off. Okay, I'm set at five eighths on the depth. I'm just gonna start running.
Okay, that's it. We just notch them out. Now you noticed they're taped together and they're all run at the same time. That way, if there's any deviation in any way, it's still all going to line up. Make sure you mark whatever's going to be your bottom. Now in this case, I did not cut them the length just yet. And what's going to happen is these are going to set in here this way with the teeth coming toward the inside. That, and then we're going to have a little cleat goes in the middle and the shelf sets on it. Not very difficult. But I will say again, extremely strong. Extremely strong. Now, an alternative to this, like I told you, is plywood. The other thing is, uh, I've seen done, is that they, I've seen them, or well, I say I've seen them, I've done them. It's just, boy, is it a pain, is to drill all of this and put a dowel in it. You can do it, but it's a pain. I find just doing the... Uh, just doing the, the lamination is just too quick and too easy. But, you know, and you'll see the way they do. But then again, you know, just some simple shelf standards if you want it or even drilling it and, you know, just using the, the shelf pegs. But this is the way we prefer. And again, I wanted to show it to you because, you know, I, I'm going to say this again, you know, even in, we've made them heavier for like big entertainment centers and stuff and shelves setting in here with great big old TVs on them and all kind of electronics, it really makes for a strong set of shelves. Okay, we're gonna run the others and uh